Hey everyone! In this video, I will show you how to use logical operators in Lua and Roblox Studio. I will first cover the basics and then show you some commonly used shorthand expressions for better programming. Logical operators such as true, false, and or, and not are essential components of coding. They test the relationship between two statements and allow a program to make a decision based on that. Logical operators work a little differently in Lua than other programming languages. They are very commonly used in programming, so understanding logical operators and mastering shortcuts will help you write codes more efficiently and understand others' well-written codes better. Before beginning, please like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. Thanks! Let's begin! I have an empty project here. For visualization, I will create a part, like this. Adjust its size as 444 and adjust its position as 020. Let's delete this spawn location. Okay, I'm adding a script to the part. Let me put the script pane here so that we can see the results on the part. Here, to get a reference to the part, I'll type local part is equal to script.parent. And I'll type if something will come back to this part, then part.brickColor is equal to brickColor.new, let's say parsley green. Here, inside the if condition, we'll put different things. If I type true here, obviously the color of the part will turn to green, because true is true and it will be executed. Similarly, if I type false, it will not be executed because false is false. If I type nil here, we can assume that it is false, right? So the color will not change. What about zero? Do you think it will change color? Let's run and see. The color has changed to green. So zero is not considered false in Lua. It is considered true. If I type game.workspace, we know it is not nil, we have a workspace here. So if I run, the part changes color because it is true. It points to an instance and it is not nil. Let's comment this out and do another example. Let's create a variable and set it to a string value. Local test equals to instance.new string value. Then I'll copy and paste this and use test instead as the if condition. Let's run. It turned green. It is considered true. If test was nil, obviously it would not turn to green. Or if it was false, again it would not turn to green. If it is an empty table, do you think it will turn to green? Let's see. Yes, even if it's an empty table, it is not nil, so it is true. If I type here test.test2 like an undefined property of test and run, it didn't change color because test2 is nil, we haven't created it. Let's summarize what we have experimented with so far. The real value of true has a logical value of true, false is false, nil is false as well. Zero is true and all other values are true. So the only two things that has a logical value of false in Lua are false and nil. Anything else is true. Easy enough, right? Now let's talk about the AND operator. With an AND operator, to have a result of true, the first and the second operand must be both true. If one of them is false or both of them are false, the result of the AND operation will be false. But if we look more carefully, there are four combinations here. The first two has the first operand as true and the last two has the first operand as false. The ones with false as the first operand also have their result as false. So we can say that if the first operand of an AND operator is false, the result will be false. We don't even need to check the second operand. This is called shortcut evaluation, meaning that the second operand is only evaluated if needed, which is much more efficient. We can express this as f, false, and anything will result in an f. We know that both false and nil has a logical value of false in Lua, so the first operand here can be false or nil, and the resulting false will be whatever the first operand is. Let me show you. Let's get rid of these two and use these two simple print statements. If I run this, the output for the first statement, which is false and true, shows as false, and the second output is nil. So the result will be whatever the first operand is, as long as it is considered false. If we look at the first two alternatives here, having true as their first operand, we can see that the output is the same as the second operand. So if the first operand of an AND expression is true, the result will be whatever the second operand is. We can express this as t true and x, x can be anything, will result in x. So the result will be whatever the second operand is. Let's see here. I have four simple print statements. 
5 and false, 5 and nil, 5 and 10 and 5 and true. So 5, the first argument is a number and it is true. We saw that earlier in the video when we tried with a 0. If I run this, you can see that the outputs always match the second operand. The first one is false, the second one is nil, the third one is 10 and the fourth one is true. So if the first operand is true, the result will be the same as the second operand of the AND operator. We can summarize that the AND operator returns its first operand if that operand is false and returns its second operand otherwise. Now let's talk about the OR operator. For OR, only both operands being false results in a false. All the other combinations result in a true. Similarly, let's take a look at the first operands. If the first operand of an OR operator is true, it means that the output will be true as well. We can express this as T true or anything is equal to T. Again, whatever the first operand is will be the output of OR if the first operand is true. Let's see some examples. Now I have three simple print statements. We know that true, zero and game.workspace are all true. We tried them earlier in the video. So if I run this, the results will be the same as the first operand, true, zero and workspace. This time it doesn't matter what the second operand is, so it doesn't need to be evaluated even. If we take a look at the bottom two statements where the first operand is false, we can see that the output is the same as the second operand. So we can express this as f false or x anything is equal to x. This time the output will be whatever the second operand is. Let's see some examples. Now I have four statements. All of them has the first operand as false. Two have false and two have nil. As we have talked about, all of them return whatever the second operand is, as you can see here. True, 10, false and workspace. So we can summarize that the OR operator returns its first operand if it is true, otherwise returns its second operand. Another operator that we have is NOT. NOT is a unary operator. We already covered the real and logical values and NOT reverses the logical state of its operand. So they are the opposite of what the logical value for an operand is. NOT true will be false, NOT false will be true, NOT nil will be true because nil's logical value is false and NOT false will be true, NOT zero will be false because the logical value of zero is true and NOT true is false. Finally, not any other value will be false. Let me show you some examples. Here I have five statements this time. Print not true, not false, not nil, not zero and not game.workspace. Let's run. The first one is false, it is obvious. The second one is true. The third one is true. Nil is considered as false so not nil is true. The fourth one is false because zero is considered true. And the fifth one is false because game.workspace points to an instance and it is considered true. So not true is false. Based on these logical operators and how they work, some shorthand expressions were derived. These are also called idioms and they lead to more efficient programming. Understanding these shorthand expressions will help you get better in programming. We all want to write better code, right? The first shorthand expression is A is equal to B or D. This basically means if B is not false, then A is equal to B. We know that if the first operand of OR is not false, it will return the first operand. But if the first operand is false, it will return the second operand, so this time A will be equal to D. So D can be considered as the default value of A here. And if there is B, something that is not false or nil, A will be equal to that B. If B is false or nil, we will set A to the value of D, which could be the default value for A. This can also be expressed like this. A is equal to A or D. This means that if A is false or nil, it is especially used for the nil case, we will set A to D, like a default value. Let me show you an example of that. Let's have a local variable with the value of 5. We'll write a is equal to a or 10. Then we'll print a. If I run this, we'll see that it reads 5 because 5 is true and a is not changed. But if I change a to nil here as the initial value, this time the output will be 10. So a will be 10. Similarly, we can also set a to false and it will work just the same and it will return 10. Another very commonly used shorthand expression I will show you today is A and B or C. 
This basically means if A is true, this expression will return the value of B. If A is false, it will return the value of C. This is especially useful if you are assigning a value to a variable. For example, x is equal to a and b or c, which is the same thing as x is equal to, in parentheses, a and b or c, because and has a higher rank in order of operations. Hence, first and will be executed and the output of the and will be used in the or operator. So for this expression, if a is true, true and b will be executed. It will return b, then it will compute b or c. If b isn't false, the OR operation will return b. So if a is true, the result of the whole statement will be b. If a is false, then false and b will return false, and false or c will return c. So if a is false, the whole statement will return c. But there is an exception here. When a is true, if b is false, then true and false will return false. False or c will return c. So what the expression will return when a is true depends on whether b is true or false. I know it may sound confusing at first, but once you understand and get used to these shorthand expressions with logical operators, you can write better codes. Never settle for a code that just works guys, always aim to write better code if you want to become better game developers. I believe in you. Anyways, back to the topic. In game development, we usually use another expression for a. Something like this x is equal to bullet is greater than zero. If bullet is greater than zero, then the whole statement will return b. If not, then x is going to be equal to c. So a is usually used as another expression of itself. Let me show you an example. I have a local variable b that is set to 5. Then we have c set to 10. And we have another local variable x that is equal to true and b or c. We know that first true and b will be executed, which will return b. Then b or c will be executed. We know b is true since it is 5, hence b or c will return b, which is 5. If I run this, the output reads 5, just as we expected. If I type here false instead, this time false and b will return false, and false or c will return c. So the result is 10 as we see here. Remember the exception case for when a is true? Let's try that. If we set b to false here and use true for this part which represents our a, then this will be our exception case and the whole statement will return c although the first argument is true like we have talked about. So these are very useful logical operator shorthand expressions that we commonly use in Lua and Roblox Studio. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe to support the channel for more game development videos. If you want any tutorial, let me know in the comments. You can get access to the Roblox project file from Patreon. The link is in the description. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.